it's Sevi. As promised, we're bringing you a comparison of Polar Star against Skyward Harp and Sundering Pulse all on Child. So by now, most of us know that Polar Star's stats and passives are pretty tailored to Child's entire kit. Polar Star is now vying for Child's new best in slot and we're here to see if that's indeed the case. I'll be showing you test clips, damage numbers, and my analysis of their performance on Child. So without further ado, let's dive in. To start, we'll first examine each weapon's stats. All of them will be tested at R1. Let's quickly go over Polar Star. It has a 33.1% crit rate substat at level 90, a 608 base attack, offers elemental skill and burst bonus, and gives additional attack percent stacks. These stacks are gained when his normal charged skill or burst hit opponents, not just when they're used, and each stack exists independently. Naturally, to get the max damage from the weapon, you need to gain all stacks for the 48% attack increase. Now let's demonstrate this with the following clip. Skyward Harp was Child's best in slot for a very long time and with good reason. While it provides a smaller crit rate substat of 22.1%, at least there's a much higher base attack of 674. It also adds 20% crit damage in R1 and inflicts an extra hit of physical damage every so often. This weapon is fairly universal and can be slotted for all bow users, and it's the most accessible given that it's on the standard banner. Thundering Pulse, on the other hand, has a 66.2% crit damage substat, a 20% attack increase, and can give up to 40% normal attack bonus, a very strong weapon for any main DPS bow user, and challenged Skyward Harp as child's best in slot when it came out. By the way, if you're new to my channel, I do a lot of testing videos with new weapons and characters, so if you're into that, please consider subscribing. But before we get into all the data, let me explain my testing methodology. Because if these tests aren't what you're looking for, it's better for you to know now than later along in the video. We're going to primarily compare crit hit numbers with a few time considerations as well. To gather these numbers, we will be playing child against the cryo regis vine. The regis vine downtime gives us the easiest opportunity to check his burst damage, riptide slash, normal attacks, and charged attacks. We'll also time the runs with the Regis Vine, but take note that these timers are meant as approximations since gameplay is prone to human error, even though I tried to replicate the test runs as similarly as possible. Now to gather numbers for Child's Riptide Burst, which is the damage dealt when his Riptide transfers from defeated enemies to enemies that are still alive, we went into Spiral Abyss. So the comparisons you can expect to see are his ranged burst, riptide slash, first and second normals, charged attack, and riptide burst. We decided not to include child's melee burst damage due to length reasons, and since the damage increase would be proportional to how his ranged burst performs. So all throughout, child is using a two-piece glad, two-piece heart of depth. While it's not his best in slot set, it's the most consistent for showcasing weapons. Adding in bonuses from four-piece heart of depth or four-piece shimanawa will place in too many factors. This is also a more achievable child build and the damage difference from Heart of Depths is fairly small anyway. We also had to do some stat balancing for each test so we'll mention those before each demo. Now then, let's get into the fun stuff. First let's compare Skyward Harp to Polar Star. This is the most straightforward comparison because these weapons both have crit rate substats. So first, we try keeping the same artifact build and just directly switching the weapons. Of course, this results in more crit rate and less crit damage for the Polar Star. If you stick around, you'll see our tests using a more optimized build. Here are the damage numbers on Polar Star versus Harp. Let's use this rotation. Ranged burst first, switch to melee stance, and then N2C, or two normals and one charged attack cancel, until the Registvine dies. His Polar Star run is faster than Harp by about one second. This clip uses Polar Star with zero stacks at the start of Child's rotation. Because of that, we see that Child's burst damage with Polar Star is lower than with Harp. But by the time he gets all the stacks and launches into his normal, charged, and riptide attacks, the damage increase adds up. Here's also what Child's Burst looks like with Polar Star on 3 stacks. You could get more total damage if you build up Polar Star stacks before his burst. 
So we can make some early conclusions that Polar Star is looking better than Skyward already. However, this build isn't as optimized as it could be. The nice thing about Polar Star having 11% more crit rate than Harp is that you can allocate more subsets to crit damage. So next, let's see Polar Star with a better build. Still keeping with the same artifact sets, we now have a Polar Star build with 2014 attack, 73.5% crit rate, and 189.1 crit damage. This trades in less crit rate for a little more crit damage, resulting in a more equal crit stat with Skyward. Now let's see how they compare. This higher crit damage build finished off the Regis Vine faster than before. Even the burst crit damage is higher than Harp now, thanks to the added crit and elemental burst bonus from Polar Star's passive. So from that significant increase, we can predict that on a child rotation that lets Polar Star stack up before his burst, the time difference will be greater in favor of Polar Star. So let's try that out. So for the rest of the test, let's stick to this more optimized build. Let's segue to Child's Riptide Burst Damage. On Harp, his Riptide Burst Damage was 5403, and you can see it multiple times thanks to his quadratic scaling. On Polar Star with full stacks, Child's Riptide Burst Damage was 6316. Again, we can see that Polar Star at full stacks outperforms Skyward with Riptide damage. This will be consistently higher for all his Riptide effects, also thanks to the skill and burst damage bonus of Polar Star. Here's a summary of the numbers and percent differences. So is the Polar Star better than Skyward Harp? It's a clear yes. Now let's compare it to Thundering Pulse. Since it came out, it has been Child's new best in slot, so let's see how Polar Star matches up. I want to issue an important disclaimer that they are trickier to compare due to their crit difference. Practically, when using a crit damage weapon like Thundering Pulse, you would complement it with a crit rate circlet, which is what I did. However, Artifact RNG makes it so that a fairer comparison is harder to achieve. This is the best we can do, so here are Child's resulting stats for each weapon. First we tried N5C with Thundering Pulse since some sources say that's his best rotation. Then we tried N2C with Thundering, and it came out a bit faster, surprisingly. In terms of time, Polar Star beats Thundering Pulse by a very thin margin. Considering human error, these weapons are pretty neck and neck. But Polar Star was at a stat disadvantage at the start, so how does it beat Thundering Pulse? Using the same rotation, Thundering Pulse has a higher burst damage. Even though Polar Star has a 12% elemental burst bonus, Thundering Pulse's higher attack and crit damage win here. Thundering Pulse also predictably has higher normal attacks than Polar Star with both weapons at max stacks. Polar Star has a higher charged attack because Thundering Pulse doesn't offer any buffs there. But where Polar Star really makes up the difference is in Child's Riptide damage. Thundering Pulse's Riptide is 6031, while Polar Star's at full stacks is 7082. Even though this is just against a single target, that higher Riptide and charge attack damage really paid off. So how about Child's Riptide Burst? It scales from his normal attack damage, so predictably, Thundering Pulse wins out. Now for the verdict, is it worth it? Even before this weapon was released, I've been saying that unless you can really afford it or unless you really love Child, I don't recommend you pull for this weapon. The weapon banner is notoriously dangerous. But now that it's here, is it worth it at R1? Objectively, from my findings, it outperforms Skyward Harp and is very close to Thundering Pulse, depending if you can optimize the crit stats. Personally, I would only recommend pulling Polar Star for the primary purpose of using it on Child. Other than that, it's not really worth risking your Primo Gems for unless you're okay with getting a Memory of Dust. Polar Star doesn't really complement other characters' kits except for maybe Venti and Ganyu, but not as best in slots. Maybe some other characters can use it in the future as well as Child, but we'll have to wait and see. So what about you? Do you think it's worth it? And for those who pulled, how soon did it come home? I would love to hear how you feel about Child's new drip because it's very pretty on him. So everyone, that's going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed it or if this helped you out, please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel. It really helps me a lot. 
Good luck on your child pulls and I'll see you soon. Take care.